Hey guys, Wild Boy here, and I'm, I wanted to make this video uh, a little bit ago because somebody asked me earlier, um, can you give an update on your mental health or how is your mental health doing? I've been asked it a couple of times. I know I mentioned it, uh, mentioned a couple of times in the last couple of last year and a half, saying my mental health's gotten a lot better, but I never went into detail about why my mental health went downward and then back upward, and I just wanted to talk about why. What, what was the main reason and what had I go through and all that so as of right now ever since I started my job about a year ago it has been improved it has been improved way better I've been so much I mean so okay so the reason I uh, my mental health at the state so here's the story okay so when I was when I quit my job working at the golf shop about about three years ago I was just got out of college this is towards the end of my last semester in college and the reason I had to leave college is because I fell too many classes too many times and I didn't want to take three retake three classes again and have an only going to one class a day I said I'm not doing that again I'm done so and um, and so after that so uh, not so the main reason so when I left my when I left school and when I left my job at the, working at the golf shop I was just not leaving the house that often I would leave the house to go to the store about once or twice a week or that was pretty much it I was no, it was not nothing I wasn't leaving the house that much so and then another main issue was uh, I was not taking my certain medication because I read something online that the more time the more the more and more times the more and more you take this medication it will there's this medication going around for a couple of years that I've been taking and there was they had a thing going around that if you took it it would, your breast or your breast would get bigger and I was and I thought I was having that that was happening but I decided I said I'm not doing that I'm not taking that risk and it's people with my, with all who's on the oxygen if I can take this certain, certain type of medicine and if you do know if you do know what I'm talking about you know exactly what medication I'm talking about so I said I'm not taking this medication again and I also took a medication and I also forgot to t take medication about helping me focus because I take I take four I take four medications every night uh, I take one to help me go to sleep because without it I will be up all night I take a medicine to uh, keep my keep because I used to have really bad voices in my head up to where a point I was misdiagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and so I kept the voice to keep those types of voices down in my head and the third one it helps me focus and focus on what I'm doing and the fourth one is just helping with my allergies because I have re a really bad case of allergies so I take four medications every night I've been taking the same four medications every night for the past long time long time and I stopped taking two of them I stopped taking the uh, one to help me to help me keep the voices out of my head and I stopped taking I stopped taking the one to help me focus and I took I went from basically from I would say June up until January now the main reason now I can give you a specific answer on why I stopped taking the one to help me focus but the main reason I stopped taking that medication was because because of the thing going around it would make your breast in less larger than they should have had and that and I stopped taking that I don't know why I stopped taking the one that helped me focus so I basically I was taking the ones that were helping me go to sleep and helping me go to the allergies and once I stopped taking them after about a couple of weeks, I was relapsing because I guess about 10, 10 years ago, I was at school and I had a psychotic breakdown. It, from what I, from, I, there's two different stories I hear. The one I remember is me, I had really bad anger issues as a kid, as a kid and even to this day. It's not as bad because back then, I was just a sad, 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 angry boy with no friends, no nothing. Nobody wanted to hang out with me. Nobody liked me. I didn't like anybody. And I got, from what I remember, this is the story I remember, I had enough, so I went to the front of the class, screamed at the top of my lungs, they needed to shut up or I would kill all of them. Now the other story I heard that I was in the bathroom and I had a psychotic breakdown. I don't remember what happened in that, but I remember I was in my math class in the morning, getting made fun of, and I just had enough. I screamed, screamed, at, the, screamed at the top of my lungs, I will kill all of you. Like, this was before I hit puberty, so it was like very high pitch. And long story short, I got two weeks of in-school suspension. And this was towards at the end of the year, by the way. And I went to the psychiatric hospital 
Uh, they did not put me into the hospital. It, the next day I went to the um, to see my doctor. He did not suggest the um, psychiatric hospital. What he suggested was the therapeutic day treatment that I went to for two for about two years. And that was the main main break. And it got so bad, my parents thought I was about to have another psychotic breakdown. Now I didn't show much of this on. I didn't show any of it on camera because you've seen me. Because I'm a t I would I wouldn't say I'm a different person off off camera. You don't see the angry when I'm fighting with somebody or when I scream at the top of my lungs. And when I get mad, I get furious to where I scream so loud. Now it used to be bad back when I was younger that I would get mad. I would flip out. I would destroy the room. Now there have been times, many, many times, well not a couple of times, I think the biggest, the most, I mean I'm ashamed to admit this, but the biggest, uh, the, the biggest thing I ever destroyed was my third grade, third grade classroom, knocked over the chairs, flipped the tables, threw everything off the wall, it was very bad. And the reason I, I flipped out and destroyed the classroom was the reason is because I would have wasn't first to go to the bus because I would always be the first one in line to go to the door to the bus and I would run to get the back seat because if I knew I was the first one to leave and I quickly made it to the back to the bus I would get the very back seat I don't even to the state that seems to do but keep in mind this was before I got the help I needed and every fucking thing would piss me off even when I watched a game show and the person I didn't want to win fucking made me help mad as hell so but what I remember, my teacher actually recorded the outburst and told my mom, my mom went up to school the very next day, told me to delete the video, she gave me two options, delete the video or sell it in the court. Teacher deleted the video, out. She said she deleted the video, I don't know. I don't see it on YouTube anywhere. This was back in 2007, 2008. I don't know. So, but anyway, back to the mental health issue. Okay, so I, this started going to get bad when I started noticing, I would say probably around late July or early August of 2019. This is back, okay, because there for the longest period of time, when I stopped taking the medication, I felt one side of my face felt funny and the other one felt fine. And I would have a kind of like a thing in my, a needle pinchy feeling in my arm. And I was thinking I was having a stroke. Now there was many times, many, many, many times that my anxiety got so bad that it would take me till up until 2 o'clock in the morning to fall asleep and to keep in mind I go to bed even when I wasn't working I was in bed by 11 30 12 o'clock at night I've never been a party man the latest I went to bed was when going out was 2 o'clock in the morning and that was when I went to the strip club with a couple of friends that's about it and that's once in the bloom but most nights I'm in bed by at least 11 30 12 o'clock at night Sometimes when I'm not working, when I have a day off, I'll stay up to 12.30, but it is actually 10 o'clock at night. But anyway, and this was go bad to where I, the medicine wasn't helping for whatever reason. And I've had so many times that I would go from my room to the bathroom to calm down, back to my room, and then back to the bathroom. And it got to where point, to one point it got extremely bad. To where I think the main reason was I went to see a friend from college who just graduated. This was probably one of the last few times I saw him that he lived here. We went out to eat and then we went to the skate park. And then that night I had trouble falling asleep again. I took my medicine, two medicines, and then I booked, and it was just really bad. It was really bad. I couldn't get to bed at all. And it was up to one point to where I woke my mom, my parents up because I was having a really bad anxiety attack. Now keep in mind, most parents would get mad, well get mad when their kid wakes them up, sleeping or napping. What, what happened, okay so the main story, this is such a touching moment, so I had a really bad anxiety attack one night in August of 2019 to where I had to wake, wake up my mom because I felt like I was freaking out really bad, I couldn't sleep. So my mom had to work the next morning, she gets up every morning, almost every morning at 4.30 and has to be at work by 5 anymore and I felt bad and I couldn't sleep. I was having a really bad anxiety attack. My um, my, my dad did, I thought he was gonna get mad. What he did, he woke up, we got dressed, went to IHOP at 3.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning and I talked it out. I was able to talk it out, talk to him, get stuff on my mom, talked about random stuff. I was able to come back home, able to sleep just fine. And I have, and you know, I've always had 
I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about it so much, but that's one of the heartfelt moments I ever had with my dad. Because my dad, my dad is one of those dads that never shows emotions, or he always has one typical reaction. And the fact that he would do something like that just really, because just when he wakes up, when you wake him up from a nap, he gets irritated and angry. But the fact that he was able to calmly take me out, that just really meant a lot to me because I know that much he cares for me. And so, and then, and then what, and like I said, I remember talking about this. So back in November of 2019, this was back when my anxiety was still bad and not taking my medication. Uh, I was in my room one in the morning. This was about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I hear a knock on my door. My parents come and tell me in the room and mom's crying or something. My dad says, we gotta go to the hospital. Your aunt just had a stroke. And I'm thinking, and I'm like, what? And keep in mind, I remember talking about this. I haven't talked about this. Okay, so back in 2019, my aunt, my mom's younger sister, who's 10 years younger than her. My mom's 47. My, mom, my aunt's 37. About three, two and a half, three and a half years ago, my aunt had a stroke at 34 years old. Now keep in mind that's very young. That's having a stroke at that age is very is crazy. No one, that, but the main reason she had a stroke is because something about her. She was born with a cleft lip and had nine surgeries before she was up until before she was one years old or something like that. That caused a stroke. It's weird because I was um, I would have a massive anxiety attacks almost every single night. That. I was, even, I was thinking about I was having a stroke and the fact that my aunt 34 at 34 years old had a stroke it wasn't a major stroke it was I think it was like a minor or mini stroke but but she's all right now she's way better she's way better back to her work and all that but the fact that it's weird because I've always had those things to where I think one thing thinking something's happening to me and it's not but the thing I'm thinking of that's happened to me happens to a different person because I was thinking I was having a stroke and that my aunt had a stroke that's really crazy i don't know if i have i don't know i don't know how to explain it. i don't know if it's like not telekinesis power but like because i've had many dreams and many thoughts to where this would happen in a dream i'm like what would be crazy what if that happens sometimes and it would happen very rarely happens to me most of the times it would happen to others like i've had dreams many times that i would have a stroke and I've, I would have a stroke or have a heart attack or even up to one point I had a dream where I had a damn aneurysm. I don't know. So, and then in December of 2019, it was, okay, and another reason, not only I was taking my medication, not only I was leaving the house, I was drinking a shit ton of caffeine. I was drinking like four or five Mountain Dews every day. That was the only thing I would drink at the time because my, that was the only sort of my parents would buy. And I would wake up with a funny feeling in my chest. Not like chest pain, but kind of like, you know, that feeling when you get a butterfly in your stomach? That was up in my chest. And I never had that type of feeling before. And it was just, and it would only happen at night for whatever reason. Sometimes I would wake up, in, even now, I would wake up in the middle of the night with chest pain. Thinking I'm having a heart attack. I just have to calm myself down and read. And there have been times where I would be sleeping and I felt like I, I, I stopped breathing. And it's just fucking crazy. But anyway, it got to one point to where I had to go to the emergency room because my ch I had chest pain, the that tingly feeling in my chest like you get in your stomach, and part of my arm was hurting. I was thinking I was having a heart attack. I was crying. I was freaking out to where I was screaming, calling ambulance, calling ambulance. It was to where. So we ended up going to the hospital. Everything looked normal. I think the main reason was I was drinking too much caffeine. And drinking Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew has the most caffeine, most... It's the caffeine with the most soda in there, and I was keeping in mind this was the most caffe most caffeinated soda, and I was drinking four or five times every day. There have been times where I wake up in the middle of the night, drink it. Now I went about a month and a half with no soda, and I have I have to admit I have an addiction to soda, especially Dr Pepper and Coca Cola. Example, one liter of Coca Cola. I get that every time I go down to the store and get the same thing. But. I went about a month and a half. I was drinking Gatorade, on occasionally a Sprite. Other than that, so when 2020 hit, I switched rooms. I had my room at the back of the house. I saw my earlier videos. Now my room is in the is in the front of the house. I've been in this room for about two and a half years. I've been in this room longer than I was in the back of the room, back of the house. Now I started taking my medicine again, and 
and back in early 2020, I got a proof of disability. Now, when I first got a proof of disability, I was getting $400 a month from the paycheck, $400 a month, Monday, whatever. I said, okay, I can live off $100 a week. I can live off $200 every week. I can live off $400 a month. Now, it's fantastic. And then it dropped down to 200, when I was only getting $200 a month. And I, could, I was only doing that for food. Very, like I said in many videos, like, like, I was only doing, I was only getting food, very occasionally a movie or a game. I couldn't even go out and buy a $20 t-shirt anymore because I was worried I wouldn't have any money for the month. month. Now, when I, when I was getting $400 a month, $400 a month for my disability check, I would get it on the third of each month. By the fifth, I would be down to like 150 because I would spend on stupid shit I wouldn't need. And, and so when 20... 21 hit I said okay we gotta you can't live off $200 a month for the rest of your life you can't live in your parents house place for the rest of your life now I'm 23 years old I still live with my parents because I'm not capable of living my loan because not only because number one I can't afford, I'm working a part-time job and I make about $500 every two weeks number two I'm very bad when it comes to money when I have money I have to spend it right away and this was back before I had bills to pay now when I first started working at the place I am now, I would only have, I would have, I would have, I don't think I had any bills to pay. But like, even when I was working at the golf shop, it was just free money that I was working and I didn't have any bills to pay. I was going to the casino. I was going to buy expensive clothes. I was buying shirts from Hot Topic, Spencer's. I would go out to Hooters. I would go out to, I was buying concert tickets. I was buying this. I was buying that. Now keep in mind now, now even though I have, now back then, minimum wage. Was back this was back in 2018. Minimum wage in the state I live in was eight eight seventy five an hour. Three four years later, it is now eleven dollars an hour. That's what I make. To be told, people make more than me. I know I know many workers who make thirteen dollars an hour. To be told, I'm happy with the eleven dollars an hour, and I make because I'm thinking because I think many times that I'm thinking, oh, I have I'm gonna get this. Oh, I'm expecting to have like a three hundred and fifty dollar paycheck. When I real I get now I know what I know what how much my pay paycheck is because I have this app to where every Thursday every other Thursday it would show what my paycheck would be is going to be and Friday in the next day I'll go into my bank account. Now I have any time there have been many times like oh this is probably going to be a three hundred and fifty dollar paycheck. I'll say that when I look at how much my check is, it's going to be a hundred dollars or one hundred fifty dollars more because I've always think maybe if I expected that if I expected to be this much. It could be more. Ninety percent of the time, that happens to most people. Ninety percent of the time, people expect, "Oh, my paycheck is going to be this or not. It's going to not be much. It's going to be this amount, and it's going to be way more than you expected." When you when your paycheck's more than what you expect it's going to be, that's fantastic. But now, like I said, with the paycheck, I'm trying to work as many hours as I can. There have been many times where I have to go home. I'm like, "Please let me stay. I need to get that extra eleven that eleven dollars I need." And so, but it's just at the point where, like I said, I have. A credit card payment of thirty dollars every month. I got a Walmart affirm payment. I have to make forty one dollars a month. I got a bed payment at least a hundred dollars a month, and I got a Best Buy credit card that I probably don't know how much I'm gonna have to have to make a month for that. And I'm sneezing. But now I got these paychecks. Now I don't have any money. Now a lot of the times now. Now I'm not saying money time. I don't have I don't have to pay electric bill. I don't have to pay rent. I don't have to pay water bill. I don't have to pay that type of bills just yet. But like I said in my last video, I'm able to I pay those off because I'm able to get those off. Like for the game, I I wouldn't get a brand new computer. I wouldn't get a brand new microphone. I wouldn't get a new webcam because I was able to like I said I was able to spend a thousand dollars at Best Buy. You're thinking oh if Best Buy gave you a thousand dollars for free or whatever. No, they gave me a thousand dollars at that time to spend, but. I have to pay it back. It's like a loan. You get this, you, you get this, you can spend it, you gotta pay it back. But, I already talked about that in my last video, but, but I'm going way off topic. But like I said, it's supposed to be my mental health, but like my mental health now, as I've been working, I've been in my job for almost a year. It'll be a year on June 11th or 14th. I don't know. June 11th or 14th. I think the 11th is when I got hired on my interview and the 14th was my first day. So it's somewhere between June 11th to June 14th where I'm, I'm trying to reach a year. If I can reach a year. Last job, I, when I worked at the golf shop, I was there for exactly one year and I left. I'm trying to at least have this job a little bit more. I keep talking about, oh, I want to save this. I want to save up money now because I want to go to Vegas. I want to move to this place to help to help pursue my dream. So, 
But like I said, there have been days on days off where I sit at home, but I'm only, and I'm working now. And working is working is helping me so much. I get to see people. I get to talk to people. I get to go out now. I'm able, I'm making my own money again. It's such an accomplishment, especially for someone like me, can make their own money instead of just hand, giving it to me. I felt like because back then when I felt when I was getting my disability check, I felt I don't know I don't know how to explain it, like pity because I felt like I didn't earn that. I'm sure my dad is the same way. He does lives off a disability paycheck, and it feels like he doesn't earn that. But now I can say the money I get now is what I earned from my work, and I felt definitely felt like I've earned that. And that's a huge accomplishment for somebody like me. My biggest paycheck was almost would have been seven hundred and fifty dollars without tax. After they took out taxes, it was still six hundred and fifty dollars because I worked forty hours one week and I worked thirty hours the next week. Keep in mind, I do back in the but like I I made six hundred and fifty dollars, a six hundred and sixty dollars in two weeks. That is a lot for somebody maybe and I had a hundred dollars from last paycheck and I'm thinking damn I don't know what I can do with this money and I only have to pay three bill payments how I gotta pay four or five but but that's just, just my date like I said for mental health from 2000 early August of 2019 up until May of 2022 it just got rocking I'm 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 still living the same shit whole town I live in I still have the same job I am but I'm a lot more happier now. My mental health has been a lot better. Now I have, I do have times to where I would wake up feeling chest pains, but that's very rarely now. But I'm just really glad. I'm very happy with the state I am now. I got a good job. Still don't have any friends like are any of those. But now working in a place that you feel accepted and you're always tell, oh, good job, Colton, you did good today, well done. And it's just really cool because the my the store manager, my boss, she has a kid who's on the autism spectrum so she understands as for someone like me she knows how to deal with it how to cope with it and that's very knowing knowing that she knows how to work with me instead of my old boss who was 70 year old guy who called me stupid because i didn't know what the what one different what a phillips credits phillips head screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver i didn't know what those were at the time so he called me stupid that's the reason i, hold, I quit the damn job but the fact and she and always and even the store man, even other managers they always pull me aside he's like hey you're off today what can we do and so i had a i had some a little hiccup earlier in the year where I was goofing off, I didn't like I wanted to be there, but but I knew in the better. Like to, like today, I I go to, every Tuesday now. I go to the back of the freight, go to the back of the store, and then I would go to the stock rooms and I would do freight now, take out boxes and put them out. Tomorrow I got to be at work at nine o'clock in the morning, so I better wrap this up. But anyway, like I said, my mental health state is a lot better now. I'm in a better place where I am now. I feel a lot more happier now. I feel accepted now. But that's pretty much it for that video. <sighs> Hair's all messed up. Hope you guys enjoy the video or get something out of it. Hopefully, it means a lot to you and it could help you out. So other than that, that's pretty much it for the video. I do apologize for going for going on this for 25 minutes. I just wanted to talk about from my mental health from 2019 up until now. If you did enjoy the video, he's after the whole thing. Thank you. Make sure you're the thumbs up, comment, subscribe, check out my social media down below. Thank you guys a lot for watching. I'll see you on the future video. Take it easy.